Hi. In the last video, we looked at these two boards running the ATmega 328P at different frequencies. We also went over customizing an entry in the Arduino Mini Core boards add-on for the clock out option. And this video is an update to that one. Initially, the goal was to calibrate the internal 1 MHz oscillator. However, because of performance reasons with the code I was running, I ended up increasing the clock well above the 1 MHz default in order to achieve the timing that was required uh, for accurate NEC infrared code periods. But because the defined value the CPU was running was different from the actual value, the carrier frequency was off, leading to questionable functionality. However, it did still appear to work, but that probably would vary on your uh, to device to device. So today I wanted to demonstrate how to set the FCPU value to the actual internal oscillator's value in order to achieve a uh, correct clock timing. And um, we'll see if that fixes the carrier frequency problem that I had. So first we'll have a look at the clock out pin, which is Arduino pin uh, D3 or physical pin 14. So we can have a look at the internal oscillator. Okay, so here we have the test jig, the chip. We're going to be running the 1 megahertz uh, internal oscillator on this and the code. And we're just going to up upload the regular um, 1 megahertz code and take a look at the oscillator. No overclocking or calibration done. Okay, so here we have the code we're going to be running at 1 megahertz, nothing special. We're going to use the uh, the uh, clock out option we uh, made last video. It's going to be just set to the 1 megahertz internal. Um, we're not going to worry about burnout detection. Set the bootloader to no bootloader. Okay, so we're going to upload this to the board using the programmer. And then we're going to take a look at the clock out pin and see what we have. Okay, let's take a look at the clock out. Okay, so we're back. We've just uploaded the uh, test uh, IR code, just sending one code out every five seconds. The oscillator is set to one megahertz. So let's see what we see on the clock out pin. Okay, and look at that. We are running at about one megahertz on the clock out pin right here. Okay, so now I'm just going to set the, uh, I'm gonna put the oscilloscope to the uh, IR pin so we can have a look at that. Okay, here we have the IR code, so let's capture. Okay, let's adjust that. Okay, so here we have the IR code captured, running at one megahertz. Um, let's just check to see what kind of time periods we have here. So we're running about 79 milliseconds, quite a bit longer than the 67 milliseconds we're looking for. Let's take a look at the carrier frequency here. Okay. All right, so the carrier frequency is about 38 kilohertz. Okay, so next thing to do is to upload the calibration code to clock the internal oscillator a bit faster so we can get the whole time period for all the code to a acceptable number around 67 milliseconds okay so what we're going to do now is in the setup we're simply going to add this oscillator calibration value this value I came up with last time um, just through trial and error to see what kind of um, increase in frequency of the internal oscillator I needed for the code to run correctly. Okay, so we're going to upload this then. 
and we're going to have a look at the pin out for the uh, oscillator once more and see what we see. Alright, here's a look at the scope after we've uploaded the uh, latest bit of code to increase the uh, oscillator's frequency. And as you can see, we're running now at 1.2 megahertz, higher than um, before, but the voltage is higher, so that's what we'd expect. And let's have a look at the oscillations. Okay. And now let's switch the pin to the um, IR codes and see how that's changed. All right, let's single shot capture. Here we have the codes. And just from the last setting, the time period has not changed. So we can already see that the, uh, all the code is running a bit faster. Let's adjust this. And we're at about 66 for probably around 67. Okay, maybe a bit fast, but that's within the realm of working. <laughs> okay, and then now let's have a look at the carrier frequency. So just like last time, carrier frequency is fast, a bit too, a bit too fast. Um, what are we running here? Running at 45 kilohertz carrier frequency, just the same as in the last video. So, what we need to do is we need to let the library we're using know that we're running faster than 1 megahertz because it thinks we're running at 1 megahertz. So, we're going to make note of the uh, 1.2 megahertz value we uh, looked at before, and we're going to alter that and look at the results. Okay, so here we are at the folder with the uh, mini core boards text file in it, uh, which we went over last video. But uh, just as a refresher, um, it's going to be in the C drive, users, your username, app data, local, Arduino 15, packages, mini core, hardware, AVR, then the version, which this one is 2.0.2. So we're going to open the boards file here, and this is the boards file, and we're going to go down to the very bottom where we added our entries. This is the entry we added last time um, with the uh, FCPU as defined as 1 million. Um, and then this is uh, simply, I copied this entry, added this down here. Um, changed this right here from 1 megahertz to 1100 kilohertz and changed this to 1.2 uh, megahertz. This frequency was different when I was messing with it last time. Now we're operating a higher voltage. I'm going to use 1.2 megahertz instead. And then simply this is the option, the important option that you have to change. Instead of 1 million, we're going to do 1.2 million. 1,200,000. Um, okay, so we're going to go back to our, well, we're going to, for, first of all, we're going to save this. File save. We're going to go back to tools, boards, board manager. We're going to refresh this all. We're going to close that. We're going to go, now we have a uh, 1.2 megahertz internal oscillator. Gonna set that. Everything else we can leave the same. So now we need to burn the fuses. We're gonna burn bootloader. And then we're going to then again upload the sketch. And we're gonna take a look at the clock out and also the IR codes that we're sending. Okay, we're back, and you can see we're still running at uh, 1.2 megahertz because our code is clock overclocking. 
the oscillator a bit. Okay, so now let's look at um, our IR codes. There, let's single shot capture. Okay, we have them. Let's see if we're still around 67 milliseconds for the whole code. 65s work. Let's now look at the carrier frequency. Okay, zoom in a bit more. All right, so we're about a little over 38, we're running about 39, 40. So there could be some tweaking that we could still do, but this is much better than 45, much closer to 48. So the uh, value will vary with voltage. We could try to give more exact um, oscillator values than simply 1.2 but um, we have modified it to actually be much closer to spec. Okay, so we've seen how to calibrate the internal oscillator. We've seen how to overclock it even, and then set the uh, FCPU value to reflect the actual clock in order to get accurate timings, or at least more accurate timings. So would you wanna do this? Well, probably not, only for specific applications that you yourself would be using. In a production environment, you know, you have a customized, um, you have all these customized options. If anyone else was going to work on this, they would need all that, so you probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, I'll just go over something that actually also did not work, which I tried. I tried adding... Um, this bit of code here, uh, if FCPU is defined, undefine it, and redefine it. This did not work for some reason. I don't know if you, if anybody else knows other ways out there. But I think that's all for today. Thank you for watching.